Story 1. Seeing Red I worked many years of steady overnights. I was constantly overtired and never quite rested. While waiting for my husband to get home, he worked steady second shift. I was dozing on the couch. The kids were in bed. I was half in, half out of consciousness. When I felt a presence. Even though my eyes were tightly closed, I felt the room turn red beyond my eyelids. I started to hear the whisper of a thousand souls in the room. The air was impressive. I tried to scream, though no sound came out. The whispers got louder and louder, though I couldn't tell what the souls were trying to say. When my husband's key turned in the door, the redness in the room vanished. The whisper stopped instantly. I became wide awake, as though I was never asleep. I told my husband that I felt it was going to be a bad night, and sure enough, In the room across the hall from the nurse's station, you know the one that's reserved for the sickest or the most unstable, my co-worker's patient passed. My co-worker was distraught, having just checked on her 20 minutes prior. We called a code and we worked on her back breaking for 30 minutes straight. I did compressions. In the end, she was gone and my co-worker was beside herself. The next night, same scenario. I waited for my husband to get home. I drifted in and out of consciousness, and the room turned red beyond my eyelids, and a thousand souls whispered tortured sounds in my ears, but I was unable to discern what they were saying. I opened my mouth to scream, and nothing came out. I woke to the sound of the key in the door. That night, at work, I agreed to switch sides with my co-worker, having felt pity for her. The room across the hall was clean, and in it was a new patient. I was tired from the night before, my back still sore from 30 minutes of compressions. I worked swiftly to get my first rounds done, and checked frequently on my new friend across the hall. I got sidetracked by a patient down the hall, whose rate suddenly went into the 150s. I got busy with his orders, and for a moment, I forgot about my patient across the hall. Suddenly, the unit clerk ran out into the hallway and shouted for me, Your patient is in VTAC. Oh, wait, no, he's in VFib. I shouted out of my shoulder, call a code, and I ran into his room. The hues in his room changed from a soft yellow to a definite clear red. I looked as my patient sat up and laid down, up and down, up and down, over and over, making agonizing sounds. He could not be still. In the midst of all this, the code team ran in, just in time to see him breathe his last breath and lay down for the last time. We all sprang into action, but it was too late. Later that week, I started applying to jobs all over town. I got myself a steady, daylight, weekends and holidays off job. I make sure I get eight hours of uninterrupted sleep every night, and I vow to never work night shift again. Story 2 What Lurks I grew up in a house in New Jersey odd feeling. The house we lived in belonged to my aunt, and my grandfather had lived there up until the time he passed away. I was very young, maybe 11 months old, when he had died, so I don't remember him. But I do believe that he would visit my room. I never saw him, but I did feel his presence very strongly. There was an extremely cold spot in my room, by my closet, and several times during the years that occupied that bedroom, I would smell pipe smoke. My parents didn't smoke, but my grandfather loved to pipe every now and then. I was never scared at all. 
Only after I was older and began hearing the accounts of my aunts and my brothers did I mention the cold spot and the sweet smell of pipe tobacco to my parents. My parents showed me the pipe that my grandfather had smoked, which had been packed away since his death. My older brother and I also had some strange feelings in our basement. He used the basement as his bedroom, and there was rarely a night that he did not bring one or both of our pet dogs downstairs with him when he went to bed. There was a small room off the main room downstairs, and that is where our clothes dryer and large freezer were. I would go down there to get clothes or an ice cream, and I could never get out of the basement quick enough. I've sustained several skin knees from the cement basement stairs because I would run and usually trip up the stairs. After my brother left for college, I hated going down there. I had mentioned the weird feeling I had about the basement not too long ago. He told me that he was never comfortable down there. Like me, there were times when he could not get up the stairs fast enough. I guess that's why he liked to bring the dogs down there with him. The fear seems to be lessened when you're not by yourself, or you have the dogs around for protection. We have since moved, and I no longer sense any of these odd feelings. Story 3. Grandma's Back Room As a little girl growing up, when my parents would go out or leave town, my brother and I stayed with a grandma. She had the normal, cozy house that grandparents tend to have. However, she had this room in the back of her house that was set up away from the rest of the house, just behind the laundry hall and the garage. It sat next to this small half-bath. It was always very cold back there. I remember how I hated that room. How I always thought that if I slept in the living room, perhaps my grandma would let me sleep out there. But it never failed. She always stuck me in that cold back room. There were many nights when I would have a dream. That I was having a dream. Like a dream within a dream. I would dream that I had been awoken, and every time I did, I would see this girl dressed in old-fashioned attire with a bustle skirt and a high collar, her dark, thick hair in a bun. I could never quite make out her facial features. There were times when I woke up and saw her walk past my door as if going from the bathroom, and she would be singing softly. Other times I would wake, and she'd be at the foot of my bed, looking at me, as if I was her precious child. I wasn't afraid of her, but I did have an uneasy feeling about her. I remember one time waking up, and she was standing right over me, I jerked those covers right up over my head and rolled over. Attributing this to my young, wild imagination, I never told anyone about this. Until I was probably a junior or senior in high school. There was a blackout in my town, so I decided to go up to my aunt and stay up in the woods with her. We got to talking, and I thought it'd be fun to tell of places we wouldn't want to be at during this storm and blackout. And I said, Anne's room. Anne was my other aunt. She asked me why, and I told her. She got this weird look on her face. This was just after the death of my great-grandfather, and some relatives had came from all over to attend his funeral. My aunt told me that my other aunt and her daughter, my cousin, had slept in that room, and they claimed to have had the same dream about the same woman. My aunt asked me to describe the woman I saw, and I did. It turns out that my aunt had the same dream that I did when she was a child. 
and that other aunts and cousins have also had this dream while staying in that room. Like I said, my great-grandfather had just died. The night he died, my great-grandmother slept in that room. When she came out in the morning, she said, I'll never sleep in that room again. There are ghosts in there. She didn't tell anyone about her experience until years later. I was at her house a few years ago, and I was curious about why she thought that room was haunted. I didn't want to bluntly come out and ask her, so I kind of eased into the subject of the paranormal and mentioned that I didn't like that back room at Grandma's house. Great-grandma said, oh, so you've seen it too, haven't you? She went on to tell me her story. It went something like this. She was sleeping, and in the middle of the night, she heard someone go to the bathroom. She wondered herself, why would someone be in this bathroom, at the back of the house, so far from all of the other bedrooms? She kept waiting for the toilet to flush, but it never did. And then she heard a cat meowing, meowing really loudly, and the cat just wouldn't shut up. She didn't want to get out of bed to stop the cat, so she just let the cat continue to meow, getting louder and louder. She said that that started to scare her. And then the doorknob turned, and the door opened about three feet, and the cat came in and jumped on the bed. Next morning, she asked my grandparents which one of them had let the cat into the bedroom. Neither of them had. They hadn't got up that night, and they hadn't been at that part of the house. When she woke up the next morning, the door to the bedroom was shut. There's carpet in the room, making the door very hard to open and close. It would have been impossible for the cat to have turned the doorknob, opened the door, and then shut the door all by itself on that thick carpet. We've never investigated the history of the house. And we don't intend to. We just try to avoid that room. Story four. Seeing double. I was in my fourth year at university. At the end of the academic year, I was busy writing my thesis. A friend, Karen, offered to proofread my thesis. And her room was on the third floor of the chemistry building. Karen and I were supposed to meet in the afternoon in one of the two rooms she usually used, so I went to look for her. I went to the third floor of the chemistry building by using the stairs. As I turned into the third floor corridor, I saw Karen about five steps in front of me. So I called out to her. This Karen has shoulder length black hair and a bright pink top on, just like Karen would wear. Anyway, she didn't acknowledge me and walked into what I thought was a room because it was a bit protruded from the wall. I thought that she must not have heard me, so I followed her. When I was about to turn into the same room where she had walked, I was facing a brick wall, beyond which was a courtyard, three stories below us. And the closest room to me was another five or six steps down the corridor. And then it clicked at just what I saw. And it frightened me. My state of mind at that moment was that I had to find the real Karen. So I kept looking for her. I found her in one of the rooms that she said she'd be in. She wasn't wearing anything remotely pink. Later, I tried to rationalize what I'd seen. I even thought that maybe I was just really stressed about my thesis and had mistaken a reel of fire hose for a person walking in the hallway. But, I mean, the fire hose wasn't anywhere near where I saw the pink lady, nor was it anywhere near where the pink lady had disappeared. So what did I see? Who did I see? Was this my friend Karen's doppelganger? Why did I see it? 
Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the stories. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Thanks for listening. Bye.